Welcome back to Vol Talk. I'm your host, Ada La Rosa. Today we're here with Finn Wheeler and Anastasia Manigan from the Special Collections Department of the UT Library. This section is dedicated to housing documents, manuscripts, and digital collections connected to the university. But first, we're going to see what students know in Circle Talk. What's the craziest thing you've had to look up for a class? Uh, genetics for chickens, honestly. Genetic diseases for chickens. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was that corn thing that we learned? Oh, about? canned corned beef? Yeah, canned <laughs> corned beef. We had to look that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, right now I'm doing a um, essay on Lord of the Rings in my English class, so that's probably it. So I once did a project on the economy of like India. Mm -hmm. So I had to look up some like stuff from like the 60s and 50s and whatever, but I think that was that. I haven't had to look up too much, mostly in electives, just basic like definitions for words. Have you ever heard of special collections in the library? I have not, no. No. I have not, no. no. I uh, yes, I have heard of that actually. Well, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you for having us. Of course. So what does the special collections do? Well, there are a lot of things. Like here, Finn works with information really from like the former deans and professors. Like he could talk to you more about that. Mm -hmm. I <clears throat> I work with military history from the Center of Tennesseans in War. So. Yeah, what we do is usually sorting documents into like uh, folders and like labeling them just for like future references for like students or faculty or like independent researchers who may, might like need them for research. It's awesome. So Anastasia, you mm. said that you do military um, <coughs> documents. What's like the coolest, not coolest one, but what's like an artifact you found that you were very shocked by? Ooh, okay. So I read a lot of letters. I think it's very cool getting to see that, oh Lord, the, the dynamic going on of like trying soldiers trying to keep a sense of normalcy with their parents and loved ones and them not ha and they are unable to talk about what's going on because they were their letters were being censored and ooh there was this one collection in particular that affected me very deeply it was letters from a from a POW a prisoner of war in Germany and he, I read some of his letters and he was, he was talking to his wife as if nothing was happening, but really there were German officials who were reading his letters and what his wife didn't know is that he was going on death marches, were going on 350 mile marches and he was one out of 350 men who had survived out of like 10,000. Oh wow. Actually, like 700, my bad. No, you're no. good. <laughs> uh, That's very sad. And when you say censor, like, do they have code names or could you just tell that some things didn't really make sense in the context it was? Can you repeat that? Yeah, <laughs> so usually, or not usually, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not a history buff, but like <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you would say like code names or you, you said that they censor things. So was there a type of way to know if it was censored or if that was actually what was happening? Actually, well, if something was, was censored, they would just cut it right out of the letter. Oh. Like they would take a tool and just take out that entire letter. And so okay. there's now a hole in the letter. And so, oh. but if, if your letter was just, or sometimes your letter was just scrapped. Okay, okay, that makes more sense. Because mm -hmm. you said the code, so I was like, wondering if they had like a specific name to know like, hey, this is happening or hey, this isn't, uh, but yeah. So Finn, tell me a little bit more about what you do and what you research and the shocking, the most shocking thing you found. Well, um, <clears throat> what I do is I research like stuff from UT like professors and there was one that I, there was one collection I worked on that was from Andy Holt, who was the president of UT. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I, I don't remember when, but um, there's good. a lot of stuff on campus. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff on campus named after him. Um, but it was really interesting just looking through his personal letters and um, like his like speeches, like he had like four speeches and that was it, but um, that he just recycled. 
But um, the most interesting thing that I like actually found was I was going through like an anthropology professor's old stuff, and um, there was we, there was this really weird collection of just like fake like eyeballs in like a uh, <coughs> in like a container. Okay. But it was like, and there was like hair as well, and it, we found out that it was like eugenics, like uh, like Nazi stuff mm, that was used to like. Uh, Categor like categorize like eye colors and, and hair colors. skin color. Yeah. There was a skin color categorizer. Oh wow! And, and um, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, that uh, that was really weird, and it I was not allowed to look at it anymore after. Didn't know about. You that. didn't know that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, they they like they like took and they were like, we have to do some independent. Uh, right, because why would that why would that be here? It was uh, it was donated from was a professor it? in Kansas in the seventies, I believe. Oh. But I was able to get a good look at it, and there were some slides in there that were pretty questionable. Yeah, like, some like human skulls next to like monkey skulls. It was like very weird stuff. Naked children, stuff like yeah, that. It was very <laughs> awful. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, that sounds like a lot to undiscover. Um, <laughs> so, with all that research, why do you think it's so important for to preserve UT's history? Well, I think it's important for, I mean, f obviously for like students who need to maybe use uh, primary sources for their like uh, assignments, I guess, or like just research in general, and um, also independent researchers if they're doing like anything on uh, University of Tennessee. It's a great place. And also for people who are just curious. Yeah, it's, I, I wonder if like before I, if before I worked there, I, I wonder just how many times I would have gone in if I had known what sort of things I'd find there. So I, I want more, I hope more people after seeing this would realize just how interesting it is like, like just make an account on like for the special collections mm -hmm. website, and check out any collection you want. Like search it up, you could find out what's in there. Like that is what Finn and I do. Like not only do we set up, make folders and organize collections and and create a story of of what the collection is about, but we digitize them for other people to look through and and think: Is this what we want? Is this what we want to look through? And oh, or one uh, one pretty interesting thing I found was a trench knife. I don't think uh, they, I don't think the people there know about it, but I found it. So <laughs> I did not know about that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> they, they're not tuning in. <laughs> oh no, I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, no. but what um, curiosity? Just like even even if you have a project, right? Or or a, a teacher, a professor is taking in a class to learn about medieval history and they want to look through our collections, mm -hmm. just come take a look. Yeah, so I've actually been there um, for one of my classes. We had to do research on something that happened at UT, like traditions, ghost stories, mm -hmm. and it was really cool to see the, they had um, old prints of the Daily Beacon, they had the yearbooks from like the 50s to 2000s, mm. and uh, it was very cool to see that some things didn't change, just evolved. Like parking. Parking was an mm -hmm. issue back in 2001, and there was like a whole page about like there not being enough commuter parking, and people would park on the sidewalks, and it's just interesting to think like history is just repeating itself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's. I have to say that something that I love about this job is something that I love about special collections is that I get to see that us humans like we've stayed the same like it's the the times have changed but the problems we have are still the same and so I I um I, I really like that exactly how you said so right. I when I get to read the letters or look at the photographs, all the scrapbooks, I get to just think like, whoa, that's something I do. Or like, oh, that's that's a very, that photo looks very modern, but it was taken mm -hmm. in the 40s and the 30s, but it was just like a, that you, uh, you, we have an idea of how 
things were supposed to be or how people were acting back then, but they were just like us. So. Right. You're gonna, were you going to say something? No, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and one of the things I think is, like, a big thing now for us is, like, the strip, like, how it's changed over time, and, like, Aries Hall has always been there, but the stuff around it has been built up more, and it's crazy to see that difference. Mm. Oh, yeah, especially going through, like, the stuff of, like, old, like, professors and stuff. You see, like, photographs of the old campus, and it looks like it's mainly Ayers, but... Um, yeah. It's interesting to see how much it's like, just like grown from yeah. there. Sorry, I meant Aries, not Aries. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to get bullied for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, this is like random, but are there any challenges with the special collections? Like you said earlier, like you were faced with like artifacts or like, what do I do with this? Like when you're looking through those things, is there anything specifically or like, what do I do with it? Um, Okay, so whenever I have that issue, mm -hmm. I go talk to my supervisor and say, uh, this item here is very warped. It's not something that would fit in a box. Is This is something that we could give to our, oh lord, I'm forgetting the name, but somebody who like fixes things. Oh, I'm forgetting the word. Do we have a person? Yes, we who do. Fixes yes, we do. Let's just say a fixer. A fixer. Yeah, like, but the fixer. I've I've seen her lab and it's really cool. But she like fixes warped books and and maps and and puts it all together. And so that's that's normally my issue. Like I don't know what to do with this. I talk to my supervisor and we send it to somebody who would fix it. Right. You have to be so delicate with those types of things. Oh yeah. Extremely. Like when we're dealing with photographs, we have to be we have to put it in mylar sleeves so that like finger oil mm -hmm. does not get on it and destroy it and so oh, yeah. we um, for the people who have to deal with a lot of photographs have to wear gloves so i had to deal with a lot of photographs are you ever like stressed you're like oh my gosh i'm gonna mess this up eh. <laughs> no i mean you're like i got it it was mainly <laughs> more like tedious than stressful because there were like it was it was part of the anthropology collection it was mm -hmm. like Photos of twins. Oh uh, yeah, the. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it was like somewhat. <laughs> From it kind of relates to the Nazi stuff, but um. Oh, okay. I just put like, probably hundreds of photographs of twins into my large sleeves. And that's what I did for like two or three weeks. Yeah, but that, that was. That does sound tedious. Yeah, it was kind of interesting though. <laughs> Yeah, there is this collection that one of our coworkers is working with. It, it's from Aramont School of the Arts and Crafts. I, I do not know the name, but it's they send in a lot of collections uh, for us to for us to process, and a lot of it is newspapers and photos. But we have to scan all those newspapers. So and many newspapers. So <laughs> many newspapers. So and. Most of them are copies of the same newspaper, so. Yeah. It's a lot. throwing away most of them. Yeah. Oh, don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> print, print was the thing, and now things are becoming digitalized. And exactly. Yeah. It's completely changing journalism. Mm hmm But speaking on that note with digitalized, you said earlier that people or students can create accounts to find more information about artifacts. Um, what website can they go to? I think... If you just go to the uh, library mm -hmm. website, <coughs> sorry, um, you can find it. But like, if you just Google like special collections UT, you should be able to find it, and you can make an account and like mm -hmm. request manuscripts, like uh, reproductions of anything. And yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, if I could recite the entire URL, I could, but I can't, so <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> I won't make you do that. <laughs> it's funny. When um, students come in to the department, what's, like, the craziest thing they've asked for that you guys have or maybe you don't have? Oh, um, all right. So the craziest request I think we've gotten, well, the one that I remember is, wasn't from a student, but it was from this 50, 60 year old man who okay. he wanted, he wanted collections of, from the Confederacy. Uh, so basically Confederate collections. 
because he is like a representative of the sons of the confederacy in fact his like his gmail was confederate son he's very into it very into yeah. it and he was very rude so but wasn't, cool. there, wasn't there one guy who just like s like camped out in the lobby and was he was like maybe he's I don't, I don't know. It seems like it's a whole different world over there. You got people camping out in lobbies, asking for... There was just like a, a weird like old guy who was just like in the lobby. Like, and he just wouldn't leave. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, I forget so what his deal was, but it was something weird. He wanted the Confederate collections. Was that the Confederate guy? Yes, I there think so. There was another guy? Uh, I don't know. I Maybe. Think it was probably the same guy. Same guy? Maybe, yeah. I don't Did work at the front desk, so I don't really... You're See, like behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, we are we are hidden away. Yeah. Well, you guys seem very passionate about what you, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that leads yeah. me to my next question: Is that what is your majors? Okay. <laughs> so, I I major in history and have a minor in museum and curatorial studies. I am. Oh Lord! I've realized I've realized that this is archiving is maybe my passion. I it seems I, like it. Yeah, I realized that I realized that I would do it for free. And so every every day it, it does not feel like a job. I genuinely enjoy what I do. So but yes, I minor in museum and curatorial studies and major in history. I am also a history major, but I I'm, I have a double minor and it's uh it is museum and curatorial studies and anthropology which is like it's kind of like history, but it's more like ancient human stuff. Gotcha. Which I think is cool. Well, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Obviously, that you guys are history majors. In another world, what major do you think you would have taken besides history? That's a good question. Sorry, I had <laughs> to throw, throw something. No, you're good. If I wasn't allowed <laughs> to take history, I'd probably go with like biology or something. I would go with geography. Good ones. I mean, they all, everything kind of like coincides with history, like geography, like how the maps were created, and uh, ge uh, geography is like well, the the relationship between history and the landscape. So how the landscape has shaped history. Right. Yeah. So yes. And Love biology. It. History of yeah, humans. It's like the history of like Earth, which is cool. Yeah. So with history, because you guys are the es experts, I'm not going to try to pretend I know things. <laughs> um, there's a lot of movies that either have um, depiction, is that the word, depictions? Yeah, I think that's the word, um, yes. of history events, and some are false, some are <laughs> accurate. Are there any movies that you're like, that is not what happened at all? I mean, besides like National Treasure, of course. <laughs> Oh Lord, I think about this all the time. Now I'm blanking. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't think of any that did it like wrong off the top of my head, but there are some that are like accurate. really good. I mean, I I think they're accurate. I'm pretty like um, you've probably seen the movie like 1917. It's about World War One. Maybe I came seen out like it. a few years ago, but it was really good, and I think it was pretty accurate. Too. Who's in it? Oh. <laughs> uh, I think Benedict Cumberbatch is in it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it was in like my film studies class. We talked about it. It's a great movie. Braveheart. 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 It is not historically accurate. <laughs> okay. Yes. I have not seen it. Very so good I... movie. Uh, but but yes, it is. It's about like Scottish, like yeah, it's the medieval. Yeah, it is uh, about Scotland declaring independence from the U.S. Yeah. Not the U.S. Jesus, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the British Empire. <laughs> it's all good. Not the, I meant to say the U.K., not the U.S. It's all good. <laughs> so how I'm kind of like relying on you guys for like history stuff, like being history buffs, mm -hmm. do your friends also rely on you? You're like, like fact-checked. They're like, hey, did this actually happen? You're like... Yeah, or no? Yes. I get that a little bit. It's mainly like me correcting them whenever they say something like just like wrong. Like, do you feel like the power uh, doing a that? A little bit of, there's a little <laughs> bit of power in that. Um, yeah. The main thing is like years, like I know years where some things happened. Yeah, yours are a lot to, it's a lot to remember. 
There's so so many. There are a lot. <laughs> uh, people will bring me to trivia, so I could win them some oh, prizes. That and is so smart. Yep, and we normally win. <laughs> so, Good. Yeah. You know, oh, we we did a Tennessee history trivia. Mm -hmm. There were like 118 teams, and I was second place for a while. Wow. Because wow. it was a it was a Kahoot game. I was second place for. I was second place, and then I was 12th place because we got to sports. Well, I know nothing. <laughs> Congrats on, on the history part. Um, has there, final question, has there been anything in Tennessee history or UT history that you found out and you're like, when did that happen? What are you talking about? Or it's honestly just cool in your eyes? Hmm. Um, there's one, so I, I did an internship with the Center for Tennesseans and War, which is like, we went to the special collections and it kind of got me into the whole thing. But um, I did a project on Alvin C. York, who was like this uh, soldier from, a World War One soldier from like, uh, I forgot what it's called, I think it's, Paul Mall, which is like a little bit north of Knoxville, but um, did a whole project on him and his like story. It's really interesting because he like basically kind of turned the tide of World War One, like in one battle. Oh wow! He like captured like four hundred German soldiers or something. It's crazy, <laughs> but that was like really interesting to do like research on. Yeah, you're like downplaying him. Like that's really well. Cool. No, yeah, <laughs> it it is. It but is very um, cool. What about you? Have you figured out anything? I, since I work with a lot of military history, I get to see just how many soldiers came from UT and just uh, where they ended up or where they were. There was one soldier I looked at who was, who was in Pearl Harbor and he was from UT. And he was, he got to be, he got to be there. He got, in, he was in a ship with, that was next to the USS Oklahoma. So, which that was one of the ships that capsized. And, and so he was, he got to be there and witness that. And I, I guess it was just realizing just how close to home, all just how, how terrible all the terrible events that have happened, how close they were to home. Like the people here have felt that, so. Right, because you think of like all those wars and you don't really think of, not like Tennessee, but more like Germany, like all yeah. those places, but it's like, it's right under your nose and you don't even realize it. Exactly, like we, you think that it's all over there mm -hmm. and you know, we could help with, with the war, with war bonds, absolutely, but we very much felt the war here because we were sending our sons over there and oh lord just uh <laughs> you know some would die some were declared missing some were POWs and and i i would read the newspaper clippings and how like all and all the cards of condolences from so many people and so like it was a community felt the impact of 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 one soldier and just and how there were many soldiers here that went and so I just think of how the war was very much here right. as it was yeah. over there so I mean, we are the volunteer state that's true go balls <laughs> go, yeah, go balls <laughs> but um, I love how you mentioned like the human aspect to it where it's like you're reading these people's stories learning about these artifacts and these were once these were people's real lives and it's dealing with those emotions that not necessarily you're feeling their emotions, but you're feeling, you're seeing the full picture. Then just reading, picking up a history book and reading it. You're actually seeing the artifacts that were there and it almost time, like takes you back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sense. That's and definitely, sorry. sorry. <laughs> That's definitely the value of like a place like the special collections where like you can see primary sources and like, like obviously like letters that were written. I, I picked up a book of, um, UT uh, soldiers that had died uh, uh, across the seas and had a, they were from UT, and oh Lord, it was it was so 
long like there were so many names but like it what baffles me is just like we were like we're in university right now just like and what I had said before about us like they were not so different from us like I cannot imagine ever being in such a situation right but I it's a very humbling experience and I heavily recommend (coughs) other students who are interested in military history or or other things like like the history of the university yeah. like just just to go and and to just take a look and realize that like we're not so different right for sure well thank you guys so much for being here i love hearing all your stories and feeling your passion about history and thank you for just representing the, the department itself thank you yeah of course thanks for having us of course well that's all the time we have for this week's episode see you next week